Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about Android expansion files. This is a little bit of an interesting topic because we used it at work. We had an application that required a lot of data and in order to get it to work we needed to implement expansion files. And we hadn't done that before we ran into some trouble so I thought that maybe I should create a video so if you all want to create an expansion file in your Android project it should be easier for you and uh, so what we are looking at here is the application and I will also run the actual application so you can see it in use and it's very simple we have this main activity where I will show status and also some progress bar down here. And then up here in this uh, grayish area, I will show a video when I've actually downloaded my material. Uh, so here I will have one of my videos. So one of my videos will be the download. It's about two gigabytes. So it will take a while over Wi-Fi in order to download it. And the important part here is that I actually get the error message in the application that I don't have Wi-Fi uh, if I'm not have if I haven't put it on, and so in that specific state you can actually request Wi-Fi or perhaps request uh, mobile data if you want to download the expansion file that way. So that's an extra thing that you can uh, look into if you need. If we look at the specific classes here, we have this downloaded class where we have all the states that we can happen. So this is a good class to look into in order to know what things you need to implement. This specific downloader uh, service is also interesting to look into if you want to see how it actually works. Uh, but if we look at the application file here, we can see that I have added this APKX library. So this is the Android expansion pack library. So this is the important one to, to add. And it in turn requires the licensing library. And now you might think that I followed some guide in order to install these. And I did, but the Android guide actually tells you to download a specific binary or a specific zip file from their website. And that zip file is many years old. It's somewhere in the early 2000s. Uh, and it's a very old package and it doesn't really work anymore. It doesn't really play well with the new classes of Android and so on. Um, and I don't mention anywhere any other package. But I went out and looked at the Git repositories that they have online and I found this Google slash play licensing. So this is the licensing client that they are working on at the moment. Either you take one of the releases from this or you can just download clone it uh, as is into your project. So this is the licensing you need. You also have this Google Play APK expansion um, repository here. The same goes for this. Download it and use it in your project. So don't look at the specific guide on the Android developer site. Use these instead. I think the guide will work, but these are the libraries that you are looking for and that you actually want to use. Importing uh, or adding a new is just add or <laughs> import a new module and you find your source. And in this case, I have my APX library here. I want to have that as a source and it will tell me what the name of the library will be. And it also tells me that it looks for this play licensing library in here and it requires that to be here. So when you import your APX library, it will also look for the LV, uh, licensing library and import that as well. So that's how you get your library into your application. You need to add the implementation path here so it actually finds your library because it will be a part of your application in the 
application tree here so you can actually point it out in turn it will point out your licensing library so the, this is how you connect the different parts uh, I don't think I have much different uh, other things that I have added uh, in in the actual connection here so th this is the important part and that you are using the the latest libraries and so on I would use uh, 29 and that works fine I used later versions of the build tools not the latest but if you are following this you should be up and running with this quite fast and you will get all these uh, services you also will get this sample download service and I reused that put in my little application key here I reused the salt that they had here for the obfuscator and uh, I have all the cl the uh, implementation that they have in this uh, if we look at the this uh, let's see here we need to look at the Android manifest not sure that I did much changes here and I added these servers service and receiver down here so the sample download service and the alarm receiver I didn't do any changes to the alarm or receiver but these are important to add to your project in order to get it to work uh, otherwise I didn't do any changes here uh, yeah you need the permissions of course you need the permissions to check license you need the permissions for internet <laughs> well, of course wake clock uh, network state and Wi-Fi state and read write storage could be good so you can actually write your app uh, expansion file somewhere I'm not sure that you actually need these permissions to put it on disk it will be put in your application directory as an obb file so maybe you're not required to have these but i put them in there uh, because they don't really hurt if you download an expansion pack or expansion file your user will expect you to use storage that's very reasonable as an expect uh, expectation if we look at my java files here i have these sample receiver and sample uh, downloaded service in my classes here but uh, the download sample alarm receiver i just copied in and the download service uh, i just copied that in as well and added my own key to it of course if we look at the main activity here i have a few classes first off we have this uh, setup up here where I actually create a file name that will be used and the specific uh, naming of the OBB file that they, they will use is main for instance in this case uh, so they, you can have two types one that is called main one called extras or something so you have two expansion files that you can upload the main is much larger or or is it main and patch for instance so main is much larger the patch is a smaller file and then you will have your version code of the current build and your application ID and then OBB and if you upload one file of a specific name it will not download a new file if it's not required so it will only download files uh, with this file name if they are not available on your device um, so that's good to keep in mind and then my ha I have my specific read <laughs> permission storage thingy here uh, so when it asks for if it can access storage I uh, use this as my key that I send through I have my little downloaded service and my little downloaded stub client here and my progress bar and status text and so on this is my function to play video very simple take my video vi view put the obb file over there and set it as my URE and start the video I don't have any stop <laughs> or pause or anything in my uh, video so when it's got it got running it will run forever or, or until the video is ended uh, so this is request permissions 
Uh, I will not cover this much. Uh, request permissions is uh, a concept for another video. I might have already mentioned it somewhere. Uh, check for video here. I will look that I have read permissions of storage. If I don't have, I will do the request of permission. And if I have permissions, then I will uh, just play my OBB file if it exists. Otherwise, I will download it. But this download function up here, you see, it doesn't do anything because I expect the file to be on disk already because this service works in the background and download the file if it's not available. So this trigger of, an, of, of a download, I'm not sure if that is actually something that you can implement. If you know, leave a comment in the comment section. And uh, I look here if the actual OBB file exists. So we have an OBB directory. And if the file name is there, we will return true uh, that it exists. Very simple function. On my create here, I will set up my status text and my progress bar and also my play button with all the functionality I, that I require there for playing my video. And then I have this expansion files. Uh, if it's not delivered, I will start this thing here. So first off, I will create an intent to my own main activity. Uh, so it will restart uh, uh, that activity when everything is downloaded, I guess or it will be notified of changes at least. So this is the pending int uh, intent when it's done. Uh, it might also be if it downloads in the background so it can start it again. I'm not sure exactly what this thing over here will actually do. Um, so if you have tried it out and know what this uh, notification is for, then uh, leave a comment, uh, comment for that as well. Uh, but I believe it if it shows something uh, in the prog in the uh, bar of the, your drop down bar, you perhaps can get back to main activity when it's done. Uh, but I have my application up when I run in it, so I'm, I will not see that. And here we have my download client marshaller. So this is the actual down. Uh, that will push uh, the uh, download and start it. So I give it the pa pending intent and the sample download service. So it can start the download. And if the result is that no uh, download is, uh, that download is required because this is not download required, then it will create a stub uh, of that uh, and return. So we have this downloader client stub. And on start, I will take that stub and connect it up. And on stop, I will disconnect it. So that means that I have a service that is running to download my file, this client downloader here. And on this service, when it actually has connected, it will create this proxy of a service and then it will uh, set the actual <laughs> messenger for updates. So on the update, it will uh, tell this messenger. And if the state changes on the download, I will print the specific state. So here I've gone through all the different state changes that can happen and print out good messages to tell the user what is wrong. For instance, you have this, you need to have uh, permissions for cellular and if you uh, add uh, <laughs> give you Wi-Fi then it will tell you this instead that Wi-Fi is disabled and you need uh, cellular permissions and so on so we have a lot of different cases here that could happen and uh, we should have breaks in in between all of these I believe might have missed some of them uh, not that important. You will get information here about the current state of the uh, of the application. And then we have this download progress here. So if we get a progress and I cheated here, I just put in the size of the actual application 
and then I will uh, divide that with overall progress and multiply it with 100 to get the progress from 0 to 100. Uh, so this could be much cleaner done and better, but I didn't do that. <laughs> so, and then I set my progress so I will get this nice little progress bar that uh, works over the screen. So this is pretty much all that is required. So if you follow the uh, little guide that you have on the Android uh, homepage, it's not that much to do actually. It's a very simple API to work with, but the caveat is that you need to use these APIs. If we go over to the Play console, and you walk over there, and we want to look at this expansion file test. Uh, and if you are in your, uh, let's see here, release management, app releases, and we go into my CC internal test here. I have a few rollups already uh, where I have added my APK. And if we go here and want to update this, there should be a link for this uh, APK to add expansion files. So here you see I have my expansion file, this ob file. So when you are releasing, so if I w will create a new release, let's do that. We go in here, we will uh, browse. Let's see if we can find an application. I believe that I actually need to build it. So I will build this with a new uh, version number so you can actually see how to use it uh, later on. And I'm back and we will upload this APK file here after I've changed the version code. I forgot to do that. So now I have this APK here, version 7. And then you have this little plus sign on the, on the other side here. And if you go on that, you can actually add a file here. So you can upload a file. You can use uh, an, an, an old file here. And you can also choose a patch file here. So that's the interface that you use in order to upload your specific uh, expansion file. In my case, I uploaded, uh, created a, an expansion file, which was an MP3, MP4 movie and just renamed it OB. But you can, if you want, add, for instance, a zip file and read from that zip file and put it out on disk if you want multiple files. Uh, but it, it works just fine to rename a, a, a normal file and get that downloaded. Uh, the interface doesn't really mind what kind of type of file that you want to download, uh, but you need to upload it to their interface and then get it back as an expansion file. If you do, don't do that, I think the upper limit of an app APK size is 10 or 15 uh, megabytes. So if you want something larger for your game or anything like that, then you need to use this concept of an expansion, expansion file. I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions about expansion files, leave a comment, leave a comment down in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you like these kinds of materials or tutorials or um, puzzle solving or anything like that, then please subscribe to this channel. And I really hope to see you in the next video.